Today I'm talking to you about your most essential drafting tools, your most basic drafting tools, which are never really talked about. Your blocks, your pen and your paper. So this is a really in-depth guide on why these are so important and how and why to use them. So let's start with the smallest, but actually probably most important first, which is your pen or pencil, your mark making tool. And you should always use the finest, most precise pencil you can find. So I got an HB, which is okay, but ideally you like to use a mechanical pencil with a really, um, with a HB or hard um, core. And that's just because if you're drafting something really big, having a slightly wider line probably isn't important. But just imagine you're drafting a really fitted dress with lots of little bodice parts and you're using a thick pencil. And when you're cutting a line, you're cutting all your lines one mil wrong. You actually over the 10 pieces on your bodice, you end up with maybe like half a centimeter wrong, not fitting. So best practice is to use the sharpest, most precise tool you can get. And I know in my videos I use a really thick pen, but that's just so you can see better. In your own drafting, the sharpest pencil you can find. Then let's have a look at paper. So you can see I can I use what is called cross and dot paper. And I bet you can guess why, because it's got the dots and the crosses. And this is a specialist paper you can buy from pattern cutting and sewing shops. I now buy a roll. If you're just starting out, you can also use um, brown paper, freezer paper, just thin paper, whatever you have at hand to experiment this before you want to spend money. What's important is that it's relatively thin, so you need to see through the writing. And with this paper, I can see all my lines, even if in pencil, I can see them relatively well through a layer. And also it's got a nice, it's not too thin, so it won't rip. It will lay really nice on, fab on fabric and you can reuse it quite a lot of times before it starts ripping. So it's a great fabric to, um, paper to use and the roll of it isn't actually too expensive for what it is and how much you get use out of it. And you might have wondered why I'm always using the wrong side rather than the lovely cross and dot side. I do it is because I find the cross and dots really distracting because I think they're maybe 2.5 centimeters, an inch apart. And if you're working at all an angle, it always looks wrong. So I prefer having a completely right side so I can do all my perfectly straight 90 degrees angles without getting distract um, distracted by lines which are already there. And also, I'm always using this side so I always know this is the wrong side. So if I have something asymmetric where everything needs to be the same, by always having a right side on top, I know my pattern pieces are correct on the fabric. So these are my reasons for using a paper and why you use specific papers. So let's just have a look at the block. Your block is just a shortcut for starting with your measurements already on a piece of cardboard. So rather than drawing out your whole body measurements and starting from zero, you basically start from something which fits you already quite well, a really basic garment. And then you just add your chains or details. So if you draft something on it, you can take it off your mannequin and add it to it and you know it fits. So it's a really quick shortcut. And it also means if you were to draft your block from the start each time your garment, you have to really be perfect because if you, anything is wrong, everything goes wrong and it loses lots of time. Here you already have a garment which fits you really well. You know all its little sort of um, little tricks and what you might have to change for certain things, um, how to balance it. It's basically just a really easy way of concentrating on the fun bit of drafting, which is adding style rather than building a foundation again and again. And a block is always either cardboard or um, in, some people use acetate plastic or 
like a thicker cardboard but it's just something which is quite hard bearing and then this cardboard it's great like this has this is really at the end of its life i probably replace it really soon because the corners are wearing off and um, of course i know the corners are wearing off so i can make up for it which is great about using your own blocks you really get to know them so you know what's wrong with them as well and on the block you want as little information as possible so you have lots of choices but you want the really important information so you always have your center front marked especially if it's something which isn't basic like the basic block it might be not as clear and um, you would always have your notches in your armhole and in your sleeve and then I sometimes on my uh, on my sleeves I also notch how much ease I have because that's a really important thing you always have a really basic um bust start which is quite often out of the way and you have your waist start and a basic bodice um isn't fitted really really tight it's has a bit of ease it's got about three four centimeters it's got about one to two inches ease in it and that just makes um it applicable to most styles if it's really fitted it's only really fit for dresses and if it's too big it's more for coats this is like your universal go-to which is great i'm now going to share a little tip with you on the really important difference between your bust point on your block and on your final pattern so on your block your bust point is right in the middle where your waist start and your bust start meet and if you stitch it up like that you end up with a really pointy and flattering bust line so what you always do is once you're ready to make your pattern is you mark a new bust point 2.5 centimeters or roughly an inch away from the original bust dart so that's always right in the middle and then you redraw your bust dart and your waist dart into that and that just gives you a much more flattering line because you don't want a pointy bust whatever you do unless you're Madonna wearing John Paul Gucci but in general this will give you a really flattering bust point you can see the darts are still the same width where they start off but they just become a bit shorter so you have to be really careful you still get a lovely edge so you might have to sort of slightly start in them and move out so you get a lovely flattering bust line rather than a pass, pass, pointy bust line when you block in theory you would be ready to, to sew the last really important thing about using blocks is that they never have seam allowance because you want to do all your manipulation before you add seam allowance so once you change your blocks into whatever you want to then you add seam allowance and mark it center front and straight of grain this is my guide to using your most basic tools and the why and how to use them